It all started at Caesarea Philippi when Jesus asked his friends, what are folks, what are people saying about me? And some of the disciples said, well, some say you're John the Baptist returned, or others Elijah, or others one of the prophets. And Jesus said, what about you? What do you who do you say that I am? And Peter, as you remember, blurts out, well, you're the Messiah. You're the Messiah. And then Jesus, for the first time, reveals that his face is now set to Jerusalem. And he explains to them what it means, what's to happen in Jerusalem. We'll go to Jerusalem and I will be killed. But on the third day, I will rise from the dead. And then along the way, as there, and remember, of course, then we have the whole piece of, of Peter trying to hush Jesus up about that killing business. And then along the way, there's a second time that Jesus seeks to help them understand what's about to happen. And then there's this wonderful experience, metamorphosis, transfiguration, that takes place when up on the mountain and the three disciples, Peter, James, and John, experience this marvelous experience of Jesus in the presence of Moses and Elijah. And now, today's reading, if we had read a few verses ahead of this, of the day's reading in the Gospel account of, according to Mark, we would have read the third time, the third time that Jesus seeks to help his friends, his colleagues, his, under, his disciples, under, his community understand what's going to happen. We're going to Jerusalem, and this is what's going to take place, and he repeats it over again to them. And it said, then we pick up with today's reading, James and John. Now, James and John are critical people, folks, in this story, in the gospel story. Remember, it's James and John are along with Peter and Andrew, the first chosen to be with Jesus, the first to answer the call, to follow. It's James and John, along with Peter, who were invited by Jesus to go up with them on the Mount of Transfiguration. And now here it is, James and John, as we read today, James and John coming to Jesus and saying, here's what we would like to have happen. We would like, when you go into your kingdom, we would like to be on, close to you, one of us on the left and one on the right, right there with you in your kingdom, right in, as kind of the center piece of the kingdom of God will be Jesus and James and John. And Jesus responds to them, and as we read, that that's not his mission to divvy out positions in the kingdom of God. But he says to them, he says to them, now, can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm taking? Can you drink the cup that I'm drinking, for, going to drink from? That is, can you be engaged with my self-oblation that's to take place in Jerusalem. And they respond that they believe they can. They can do that. And Jesus says, that's fine. You can indeed be 
caught up and embraced in my self-oblation. But it's not my job to divvy out positions in the kingdom of God. That's God's. Now I understand James and John. You know, it wouldn't be a bad deal, right? To be in the center of the kingdom of God, right there with Jesus. For all creation that's caught up in God's kingdom to say, wow, there's Jesus. And look over there when he's right. There's Bill Lane. Wouldn't that be nifty? Jesus says, Bill, James, and John, you have things that you should be concerned about. That is, most of all, how you engage with my self-oblation. But positions in the kingdom of God are not part of your concern. So, James and John in a sense, are put in their place. But in a larger sense, they are instruments of revelation for us. We are not of our own worth assigned positions in the kingdom of God. We are citizens of the kingdom of God through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are citizens of the kingdom of God because God has invited us into that kingdom. Amen.